Welcome back. So here we are again in SketchUp. As we discussed in the previous lessons, I have added a bit more detail to this model since the previous stage of work. Plus, we've modeled and imported all of our structural elements as well. So if we open one of the raster section scenes, let's go for section A raster. Here you can see this has automatically been updated to show the brick veneer wall buildup and the roof trusses and some of the beams, etc. You'll also notice that I've added planes for the inside and outside faces of the roof sheeting, as well as a batten zone. And I've done a similar thing for the ceiling linings with a zone for furring channels and an area for insulation. Again, this is all about modeling the appropriate amount of detail relative to the output that I want to produce. By setting up planes like this, I can be confident that I have the correct buildup for the ceiling and the roof construction without having to model every batten or roof profile or furring channel. Okay, so if we now look at one of our vector scenes, let's go to section A vector, we can see that they have not been updated with this additional level of detail. Therefore, we need to go back to our working scene and update our section cut face line work. So if we turn section planes back on and zoom out a little bit so that we can see what we're working on. If I select the section A section plane, right click, remake section cut face and we get a new slice through our model. If I hide the section planes, you'll see that for some reason, when we remake the line work on demand like this in section cut face, the second time round, it forgets which tag to put it on. So if we select this line work, you'll see it's untagged and it has no name. So let's place that back on the section A line work tag. And then if we go back to the section A vector scene here you'll see that line work remade and because this is 2d line work i can add detail and hatches as much as i like without affecting the rest of the model okay so the first thing to do is to just get rid of this kind of solid section in the middle here and i can also just as we did before tidy up any junctions and remove any additional line work that we don't need Okay, so I've just quickly tidied up a few things and got rid of that blue fill and replaced it with a white fill just so that we can see what we're doing. So the next thing to do is to add some additional line work to make this section a little bit more legible. The first thing I like to do is to simply add a crossed line across the cut timber. So here is a cut beam. So if I just draw a line like this to denote these cut timbers, Okay, fast forward a few more minutes and I've just added a little bit of additional line work to the section, not much. If I zoom in, you'll see that I've added some crossed lines just to denote where these cut timbers are for these beams and these beams here and for these decking bearers down here. I've also just added a 90 by 45 millimeter crossed rectangle here to denote the floor plate and wall plate of these stud walls. Again, it's just a case of drawing a rectangle and making it a group and then copying it around. In addition to that, I've added some linings to uh, these walls and ceilings and soffits. Typically, when I model things in SketchUp, I only model to the frame dimensions and that's what I dimension to. That's sort of industry standard here in Australia. It might be different wherever you are. But when I draw the sections and details, I like to show lining. So I just add those in as, as lines very, very quickly in this line work. Obviously, we're spending a bit of time on these sections now, and we can do that because in theory, at least, there's much less chance of the design changing at this stage of the project. If something significant were to change, then I would just use Control or Command C and make a copy of all this extra line work that I've just done before remaking the section cut face. Then once I've updated the section cut face, it's a much quicker process to simply paste this back into place and then adjust it accordingly. There isn't really much more line work to do on this drawing, but there's something else that I want to point out. You'll notice that now we've got these extra lines in here, the way the style is set up, it's just looking like a very thick line. So I want to adjust that in my style settings. So what I'm going to do is just with this vector section style selected, I'm going to create a new style and just call that cd vector sections okay and then if we edit that style 
I just want to dial down the profiles, which is the thicker lines around the edge of all these things. And let's just set that to one. So now, although it might look a bit kind of more plain in this viewport, once we put the viewports back together, it'll look a lot better. I also need to make sure for this style that in the face settings, shaded with textures is turned on. That will allow me to add hatch patterns rather than just blocks of solid color in this scene. Okay, let's update that style to save the changes. And as always, make sure you save that style for later use. So now I'm ready to start applying hatch patterns. The easiest place to start is the brick veneer walls because we've already got that hatch pattern set up from our floor plans. So over here in my colors in model section, if I scroll down and pick up my uh, brick hatch down here, I can quickly just apply that to this skin of brickwork. Next, I wanna apply a concrete hatch pattern to the slab and my footings. If we go to the patterns section again, we should be able to find this concrete hatch down here, which I can apply, which is okay. But the thing is, I wanna add a bit of color to these drawings, not too much, but just enough to make the builders pay a bit more attention. And I want this concrete to have a light gray tone. So what I need to do is edit this material. Okay, so for some reason, the materials editor on the Mac version of SketchUp is very different to that on the PC. So if you're working on a PC, you might see something a bit different, but the basic principles are the same. So please do try and follow along. So if I start by selecting this concrete pattern that we already have, right click and go to duplicate. And let's call that concrete gray. Okay, now if I then right click on that material and go to edit, we open up the edit materials dialog. So let's have a look at some of these options. Down here, we can replace the texture with something else. And we'll get into that later when we create our own hatch patterns. We can also change the size of the image tile that is used over and over again to create this pattern. So if you want to increase the scale of the hatch, then you simply increase the size of the tile that's used. We can leave all this as it is for now. I just want to change the color for this one. So on a Mac, the way to do this with the material open for editing like this is just to click on the color tab up here or the color wheel. Then I can select one of these preset colors and that'll be applied as the background, as you can see down here. So if I close this and go back into here, I've now got that gray concrete material available and I can apply that to my model like so. Okay, so I also want to quickly just apply a sand pattern to show this compacted fill underneath the slab. And again, I can just use one of the ones that comes with SketchUp. There's one in here called sand, which will probably do the job. So I think that that hatch is a bit dense, so it's quite hard to see. So again, I just wanna quickly edit that hatch. So if I go over here to the sand material in my patterns dialog, right click and go to edit. If I go back over into the SketchUp window, you'll see that I get a dropper here. If I select that instance of the hatch in my model like this, then I'm able just to change the size of the tile and you'll see the hatch increases accordingly. I'm quite happy with that, so I'll just hit close. Okay, so the last hatch pattern that I need to apply to these sections is just to show some insulation in the stud wall here, as well as above the ceiling. Now, I could just apply another hatch pattern that comes with SketchUp, but I'm actually quite particular about how I like to show my insulation. So for that, I think we need to create our own hatch pattern. It's not that difficult. Let me show you how. Okay, so here I am in a fresh, empty SketchUp model, and I'm gonna draw the recurring pattern that I wanna use for my insulation bats. So with the rectangle tool selected, if I start at the origin point, I'm gonna draw what will be the cross section through one of my insulation bats. So let's make it 1200 millimeters wide by 200 millimeters high. So this rectangle will act as the background fill for our hatch and it will sit behind the line work that we're gonna add in a minute. So let's just select all of the geometry and right click and make that a group so that we can keep all the geometry separate. Okay, so now the next thing to do, if we zoom in on this corner, with the tape measure tool selected, 
I want to set out some guides for the pattern geometry. So let's set one out here, 50 mil from the edge and another at the same spacing. And let's also set one 50 mil from this top edge and another 50 mil from this bottom edge. Next, if we pick up the circle tool, I want to set circles with centers on these intersection points. So I'm going to start with one here and snap it to this grid line. I'm also going to set another one on this intersection point and snap to this grid line and do the same on this side. Okay, I don't need the uh, fill that's contained, I just want the line work. Hopefully you're still with me here. Okay, so with these circles set up, I also now want to use the line tool and just draw lines from these intersection points back to the center and another back to here. Lastly, I want to draw a line just tracing this guide along here and another along this edge just to split the geometry up. Now I know this looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but bear with me. Okay, so if we get the eraser tool, all we need to do is just delete some of these lines in here that we don't need so that we are left with this. Now we can go to edit, delete guides, and now we've got the recurring loop that I'm going to use to create my hatch pattern. So let's select all of this line work, right click and make that a group. Okay, now if we zoom out, I just want to drag copies along this rectangle. So if I drag a copy along here and just type in 100 and then I know this is a 1200 long so 11 X and now we've got our hatch pattern build out now I want to give my insulation a nice pink color you could also choose yellow if you wanted to or just leave it white if you think it's all of it out there but it's simply a case of selecting the rectangle group double clicking to open it and then picking up a color over here, something like this, and then using the paint bucket tool to apply it. I also want to hide the edges in this group. So if I just select each of these edge lines for this rectangle, and then right click, hide. Okay, so now we're ready to exit out of the group. And there is our pink insulation pattern. So in order to create this as a texture, I just want flat geometry, much like creating a scene for a floor plan. So I want to be looking at this from above. So if I go to camera, standard views top, that looks much better. You also wanna make sure that your camera is set to parallel projection. And I also want to hide the axes. In the styles dialog now, we don't have to create a new style or anything. This working model style is fine, but I wanna edit the style ever so slightly. So under edge settings, let's turn profiles back on. And now you'll see that as soon as I do that, because my line work is a series of groups, they immediately get a thicker line applied. And I want this to be able to be really clearly legible at one to 50. So I'm gonna increase this actually to three. Okay, so now it's just a case of going to file, export, 2D graphic. And I wanna save this as a PNG file just to preserve the crispness of the line work as much as possible. And let's call that bats pattern 200. Click export. So there's just one more step we need to do before we can create our texture. We need to open this image in any image editor you might have on your machine. I'm on a Mac, so I'm just going to use preview here. So once we've got this image open, because I want this to be a repeatable seamless tile, I need to just draw a bounding box around this color fill that we have here and then just crop out all of the rest of the white space. And we end up with something that looks like this. So let's just save that file and head back over to SketchUp. Okay, finally, we're back in SketchUp and our materials dialog box. So what I wanna do is go to over here where it says color and select new texture. And from here, we can select our bats pattern 200 that we just created a minute ago and click open. We know we set that pattern up at 1200 by 200, so we can just make sure those dimensions are absolutely correct and hit OK. And now you'll find down at the bottom here is our hatch fill pattern. 
So if I go to my section line work, I can pick up my 200 insulation pattern that we just created and apply that to the insulation in the ceiling. Sometimes this happens, you'll see that the pattern is slightly out of sync. If I zoom in, right click and go to texture position, then I can easily just move that texture around until it fits neatly in the space. Okay, so a bit long winded, but we got there in the end. Don't worry if I lost you somewhere along the way, I've included these textures in the download section of this module so that you can simply add them to your library for next time. I'll go away now and do the same to our section B line work. Join me in a minute to see what that looks like. So welcome back and now as you can see I've added the same detail and hatch fills to our section B vector viewport as well. I'll also add another two section cuts to the drawing set later and I will show you those later on in the module when we come to finishing off our drawings. Let's just quickly jump over to layout to see how this looks. Okay so here I am in my sections drawing package and layout and uh, you'll see that we currently have the old sections still showing up so again it's just a case of going to file document setup references and then let's replace this DD building reference with our CD building and go to open. And you'll see there's something not quite right here and that's because our vector viewport needs to be rendered in a slightly different way. So if we unlock the vector viewports layer, right click, select entities, and then go to the SketchUp model. Here we'll see we've got our section A vector line work brought in but it's rendered as a vector. Now, because we've added those textures and hatches to it, we want to render that as a hybrid. And here we have our updated detailed section drawings. Here's section A and here's section B. Okay, so it's taken a little bit of work to get it, but I'm pretty pleased with how they look. There's a few little things I need to just tweak in terms of this ground line around the decking, etc. but we'll leave them as they are for now. In the next lesson, we'll set up reflected ceiling plans and electrical layouts for our project. See you there.